Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about searching and sorting. You'd be familiar with these terms in everyday life, like searching for your keys or maybe sorting objects in relation to their height or something like that. But in computer science and in this course we're going to be looking at searching and sorting in a little bit, a little bit differently. So it's still the same ideas but what we'll be mainly dealing with will be numbers. So we'll be searching and sorting through different numbers. And the reason why we use searching and sorting is to help us make useful websites. For example, you're all probably familiar with Facebook. When you log on to Facebook and you see your timeline, the most recent stories are usually at the top. And then as you scroll down, you see later stories. So you could say these list of stories, or I think Facebook refers to them as posts, they're in order, starting with the most recent post and then continuing down to the latest post. So let's get back to a more practical example. So let's imagine we have a box here, and in our box we have a set of numbers. Let's say we have 2, maybe we have 15, then we have 6, and 3, and 12 and we'll say 5 and 9. So this is our numbers. You can see that we have seven numbers in our box. Now we want to perform a search. Okay, so we want to search for one of the numbers. We want to search for the number 3. So as humans, we can look at all these elements and then pick out the number 3. But unfortunately for computers, it doesn't work like this. And rather than having these numbers in a box, as I called it, we usually have these set of numbers in a data structure called an array. So it would look something like this. We'd say 2, comma, 15, comma, 6, comma, 3, comma, 12, comma, 5, and comma, 9. And I'm just going to put square brackets around all of our numbers and now if we want to go and look for that same number six if we were a computer we would have to do this by performing some set of rules and one of these rules and the most simplest rule would be to start at the first element or the first number and check to see if that number that we're looking at which is two is it the same as the number that we're looking for? So our, the number we're looking for is 6. So 2 is not equal to 6. So then we'd go and we'd move on to the next number in our array. And we'd check to see if this number, which is 15, we'd check to see if it is equal to 6. Again, it's not equal to 6. So we'd move on to the next number. And then we get to 6. And 6 is indeed equal to 6. So it's perfect. So we could say that this this array has got the number 6 in it. So we could say 6 is true. Now imagine we got a number like maybe 25. We'd have to do the same thing. We'd go to the first number, check to see is it equal to 25. It wouldn't be. So we'd go to the second one. It also wouldn't. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And you see what I'm getting at here. We'd have to go through the whole entire array just to find out and just to say that 25 is false because 25 is not in the array. Now this video is just an introduction so I'm not going to get into it in too much detail but there's two types of searching and the first type is called linear search and that's basically what we're after doing here but I have a follow-up video where we go through linear search in more detail so if you didn't quite understand it don't worry about it and there's other more complex situations that we have to think about when we're doing linear search. For example, there may be duplicate values, so there could be more than one six in the array, and if there is, what do we do in that scenario, and so on. The second type of searching we can do in our array is called a binary search, and a binary search is much faster, and we'll get into a discussion on what faster means in a different video about complexity analysis, but it's basically a better type of searching that we can do on our array, which allows us to find the element faster. But there's some certain prerequisites for that array. For example, if we want to do binary search on an array, the array must be 
sorted before we can implement our binary search. Otherwise, we're not actually going to find the right answer at all. And we'll get into examples of binary search in future videos. So now I'm going to move on to an introduction in sorting. And as you can see, I'm going to use the exact same numbers as I did for searching. So we've got our numbers here, which you can imagine as a box or something like that. And then when we transfer our numbers into a computer readable format, which is an array in this case, there's other different data structures you can put your numbers into. But an array is one of the more simpler ones that we can use because an array is just a list of numbers. So after two, we have 15. After 15, we have six. So it's, it's quite easy to understand the progression of the numbers, unlike some of the other data structures, which mix the numbers up a little bit more. Okay, so let's talk about sorting. So imagine we've got our array here and we want to go and sort these elements. As a human, you just look at this and you'd see, okay, so two is first, then you'd look and you'd see, okay, there's three, then there's five, six, uh, and then there's nine, 12, and 15. And that's how you would sort them. And you'd, you'd write them out as, a, as I've said. But as a computer, again, you need to follow a certain set of instructions. So we need to go and look at all these elements. So for example, one approach might be to go and look at two and then we assume two is the smallest number, but we're not sure. So we have to go and look at all the other elements in the array. And if all the other elements in the array are smaller, we then can add two, or we can say two is gonna be the first element because it's the smallest. Then when we move on to our second element, which is 15, Again, we presume that 15 is the smallest element. Now, it's not actually the smallest element, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then we'll compare it with 6. And then we can see that 6 is actually smaller than 15. So we would then replace this 15 with a 6. And then we'd continue with our 6, and we'd loop through the array and see if there are any other smaller elements. And then we get to three, and then we see that three is indeed smaller than six. So we would swap three with six. So now we would say three is the smallest element, not including what we've already defined is the smallest, so two. So then we'd move on and we'd say, okay, we've got three as our next smallest element. Is three smaller than 12? It is. Is three smaller than five? It is. Is three smaller than nine? It is. Brilliant. And then we'd move on to our next element here, which is six. But if you remember, we actually switched six from last time. So we so we would actually have a 15 in the place of a six here. And then you compare 15 with the next element. And again, this would no longer be three because three is already switched. So you'd be comparing 15 with six. And then you would find out that six is smaller and then you go through it again and again. Now, I don't want you to worry too much. I'm not going to go into too much detail. And if you didn't quite get that explanation, that's fine. This is only an introduction. But I just want to mention that there's three different types of sorting that we're going to learn. So the first type of sorting that we're going to learn about, and we're going to have a dedicated video on each of these three different types of sorting algorithms. Our first one we cover will be bubble sort. The second type of sorting algorithm that we're going to cover will be insertion sort. And the final sorting algorithm that we'll cover will be quick sort. Now, quick sort is actually the best type of sorting algorithm. And what I mean by the best type is its speed is faster. So it's complexity analysis. And again, if you don't know what complexity analysis is, don't worry about it. There's going to be a separate course on the complexity analysis of each individual algorithm that we're going to be going through, both for searching and sorting.